Is love really in the air, or is that the faint smell of silicone? Should we be ashamed of owning a synthetic sexual partner? Today, we're unboxing the curious, captivating world of sex dolls to unveil the history and the mystery behind this one-sided romance. All this and more coming up on The Number Two Show. Welcome back to The Number Two Show. I'm your host, Rafe Williams. Today, we're diving deep, unraveling the sultry, silicone-throated, I mean, coded history of sex dolls. From seafaring honks to tech geeks, everyone's had a fling with one of these inanimate beauties. But how do we go from stuffed clothes to stunningly realistic companions? Follow me through the glory hole and find out. First, let's talk about the stigma of sex dolls. Women can have anatomically accurate sex toys of any shape or size, but if a guy wants to get naughty with an inanimate object, he has to make love to a retrofitted Campbell's soup can or take a modified mag light to pound town? Come on. We're living in the future here. We're not asking for much, all right? We don't expect Ex Machino or the Austin Powers Fembots. Hell, we'd settle for a little reverse cowgirl with Rosie the Robot from the Jetsons. For some, they provide a space where people can explore their desires and fantasies freely. There's no judgment or shame. They won't reject you. They won't trigger your social anxiety. They're always there when you're ready. And with modern advancements, things are getting pretty cool. Yet, most folks would rather you find a real dead body stuffed under their bed than a realistic-looking sex doll. Whether you approve or disapprove, sex dolls are a part of our reality. To learn how we got here, to understand the future, we have to go back through time. From the annals of history. Still pretty sure that's missing an end, but anyway, maidens of the voyage, sailors hundreds of years ago crafted the first iteration of these sensual companions from sewn clothes, giving rise to a tradition of companionship on the lonely seas. Imagine a rugged sailor battling the high seas, missing the soft embrace of a woman. What does he do? He gets creative. With a needle, some thread, and whatever materials at his disposal, some old clothes, straw, or perhaps the odd spare sail, he crafts a companion. A small batch. Artisanal lover, if you will. And you thought scarecrows had a tough gig. I would gladly have an entire murder of crows pecking away at my face than a schooner full of horny semen. But these maidens of the voyage, they carried stories, embodied emotions, and sailed across oceans facing tempests and triumphs alike. All while keeping all hands on deck and ready to batten down the hatches in the crystal waters of post-nut clarity. They were symbols, a rudimentary form of affection and a testament to human ingenuity in the face of loneliness, and sex dolls remained relatively unchanged for hundreds of years until a time of free love and psychedelic exploration. Which brings us to the inflatable era. We finally say goodbye to our stuffed ladies of the sea and trade them in for a lover that in case of emergency can also be used as a flotation device. Yes, the swinging 60s, a decade known for its monumental leaps in the realms of inflatable intimacy. Say goodbye to the raggedy Ann relics of yesteryears and hello to the vinyl vixens, our buoyant bombshells bobbing into the age of erotic evolution. Now here's where things get a bit more sophisticated or as sophisticated as a balloon with boobs can be. These weren't just any balloons, mind you. They were a marvel of their times, bringing a puff of modernity into the bedroom or wherever one's adventurous heart might lead them. The 60s welcomed these air-filled aficionados with open arms, and let's be honest, it was practical, okay? Got a small apartment? No problem. Deflate your date, slide her under the bed, and voila, space saved. Going on a trip? Pack your portable paramour, and within a few deep breaths, you're never alone. Which brings us to silicone. The unsung hero, adding a dash of realism to our synthetic sweethearts, making them not just objects to desire, but masterpieces of material science. Who knew the periodic table could be this provocative? The combination of elements S, I, and O turned out to be a new element, BJ. Today, these new age nymphs are nifty, nimble, and noticeably nuanced. Circuits course through their silicone skin, dolls with the gift of gab, the ability to whisper the sweet nothings one might yearn for in the midnight hour. Now the bedroom is not just a realm of physical fantasies, but a theater of techno titillations where the dialogue gets a digital upgrade. The discourse of desire now directed by algorithms and articulations of the artificial. It's that good AI booty. 
Now that we've covered the history, here to help us understand the modern state of this synthetic union and dive into something a bit, well, inflated, please welcome to the show the ever lustrous but never loquacious Inflatable Isabella. Isabella, welcome to the show. You're looking radiant today, if I may say so. Did you get a new air pump? <laughs> uh, I guess a lady doesn't reveal her PSI, eh? <laughs> now let's dive in. Isabella, you're a point of contention. Some say you're a modern solution to loneliness, while others argue you objectify and dehumanize relationships. What say you? Taking the fifth, playing it close to the chest, or should I say, close to the vinyl. <laughs> I guess similar critiques have been made in the past about rock and roll, video games, and internet dating, so maybe we should just chill out, wait and see how this plays out. <laughs> All right, let's press on. There are people out there who genuinely love you, collect you even. Are you flattered or a little freaked out? Mysterious as ever. Your silence speaks volumes, kind of like a mime, but you're way more expressive and willing to let people into your box. I guess admiration in any form is okay as long as it doesn't cross the line into obsession. Good point. Some people argue that inflatable companions like you, Isabella, can actually serve therapeutic purposes. For instance, you can help people with social anxiety practice interaction without judgment. And isn't that a good thing? Well, on the flip side, critics argue that companions like you create a false sense of human interaction. They say it's like expecting to get healthy eating plastic fruit. Thoughts? Clearly, you're not one to get easily deflated by criticism. You wildcat. Let's make it more personal, shall we? Do you feel like you're making a meaningful impact on society or... Are you just another form of escapism, like reality TV, but with a more authentic personality? Leave it to Isabella to keep us all guessing. <laughs> Guess we'll find out next week on Silicon Island. All right, let's wrap this up. Any final thoughts on your contribution to our social fabric, Isabella? Are you a hero, a villain, or just the life of the party that nobody wants to admit they invited? Uh, uh, well, there you have it, folks. The ever-enigmatic, inflatable Isabella. She may not have vocal cords, but she has a functional mouth and certainly gives us a lot to talk about. With the information from that pressing interview, I think it's safe to say the presence of sex dolls in society has a lot of implications, influencing individual relationships and broader societal norms. Some argue that sex dolls objectify human partners, making it challenging to form respectful and empathetic relationships. The dolls might reinforce stereotypes and unrealistic body expectations. On the flip side, sex dolls have been used therapeutically to help individuals overcome sexual trauma, anxiety, or dysfunction, providing a non-judgmental space for healing to happen. So the next time you find the world of sex dolls a bit too baffling, just remember at least they'll never steal the covers or argue about what to watch on Netflix tonight. Third night in a row, it's Predator. Plus, they'll never finish before you do. Not that that was ever a problem. Uh-oh. You know what that sound means. It's time for the wrap-up. So there you have it, folks. As we stand on the precipice of passion and plastic, taking in the panoramic view of human desire, it's clear that sex dolls aren't merely passive players anymore. They're catalysts, compelling us to confront and converse about the contours of companionship, the boundaries of objectification, and the principles of realistic relations. So what do you think? Are these dolls just harmless hunks of high-tech hardware, or is there something more to unwrap? Dive into the comments, share your thoughts, and let's keep this conversation flowing. And don't forget, hit subscribe, ring that bell, and keep yourself updated with the overflowing content we have in store on The Number Two Show.